Hi guys, very welcome to Mentor and yet another video podcast. As always, I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Today on the podcast, guys, we're going to be talking about the eyebrow windows. Why were they there in the first place? Why are they not there now? And what do we pilots think about the eyebrow windows? And also, do we really use them for star navigation? Stay tuned. Guys, this video is brought to you in cooperation with Brilliant.org. Now, Brilliant.org is a website that will help you perfect and improve your mathematical skills and your physics skills. And they do so by using real live examples. So, I highly recommend you to check them out. You have the link to the, um, to the website here in the description of the video. Enjoy. Right guys, so um, if you've seen a, the, any of the older 737, you would have noticed that we don't only have the front windows, but we also have windows 4 and 5, which is located up here, okay? Those two windows here, that used to be here, um, were called eyebrow windows. Um, they were there on all of the earlier Boeing types, like for example the 707 and the 727. Now the reason that the eyebrow windows were there in the first place was that the pilots and the um, FAA actually when it was uh, certified thought that during tight turns, during for example uh, visual circuits, then the, there was not enough visibility. You couldn't see the runway properly, you needed a little bit more visibility. So these windows were added. Okay, um, so. They do actually do that. They, uh, I've flown on the on the older types of the 737-800 and they do add a little bit of visibility in the turn, but the, the fact is that in modern operations of the 737, it doesn't really add that much to it. Uh, what it does though is it lets the sun in. When the sun is standing really high up on the, um, uh, um, you know, during the summer month for example, you tend to, s to always have the sun in your eyes. So what you would have seen that pilots would have done would, would be, you know, these windows being constantly filled with things like IFR charts or checklists or their own little sun vices that was homemade and things like that. So what Boeing found out after extensive obviously use of this and from feedback from the customers was that these windows they are not really needed okay uh, so what they did was they on the older types the types that were already fitted with the windows they constructed a plug uh, the plug replaced it and uh, and that saved just a little bit of weight about 20 pounds I think but the weight wasn't a big issue the really big issue was the maintenance interval so anytime you have windows fitted the fitted needs to, uh, sorry the windows needs to be uh, inspected at regular intervals by taking away these windows you save about 300 hours of you know of uh, um, maintenance checks during the lifetime of the aircraft so um, so that's the main reason they weren't they really weren't used to anything useful anymore and they were just a nuisance and it saves both money and maintenance time for the airlines okay now what about using them for astral navigation was they were they ever used for for astral navigation the answer to that is no all right there were or there are aircraft that does have specific windows for uh, star navigation astral navigation okay you can see it, for example on the, on some old 747s but the thing is that window is located much further up because you need to be able to see a bigger part of the sky and also you need to to be able to stand up to use a sextant to do that now star navigation is an art form of itself Okay, um, the I'm not going to go into what you know exactly how to do it, but basically what you're doing is that you're measuring the height of a specific star at a specific time, and then you're using a little table that tells the um, tells the, the the navigator where at what point that particular star should be. A, exactly above your head and given that you now have a, uh, a position where it should be at that time and a angle you can use trigonometry to calculate a line of position an LOP based on that star okay so the navigator would then um, would then make a line of position that can be at a specific distance from 
that first distance but you know in a circle yeah. and then he or she would look at a different star and draw another circle and a different star and no, draw another circle and where all of these circles intersected then you would find your position and it, it turns out that it is extremely extremely accurate uh, astral navigation is very very um, uh, fascinating um, and this gets you within about five nautical miles from the position that the GPS is using and in fact the GPS is using exactly the same kind of theory but instead of stars we're basing it on fixed uh, satellites that is moving on a fixed um, uh, orbit around the Earth. So astral navigation and GPS navigation are actually very very similar it's just that one is done manually and a little bit less exact due to the the fault of finding the correct angle and the GPS obviously is done automatically by our navigating system. Guys, uh, I hope you like that one. That will explain why you don't see any eyebrow windows on the 737s or any of the modern airlines anymore. But you will actually see the eyebrow windows on the military variants of the 737, for example. Because the military, especially the US military, still wants the eyebrow windows to be fitted to give that little extra, um, extra visibility outside. Guys, as always, make sure that you have downloaded the Mentor Aviation app. Uh, there is more and more people in there every day, more people that is answering questions, that is asking questions, and that's just hanging out because they like aviation. So if you want to take part of that, remember that the app is completely free. Get the app, you can tag me in there, and we can have a little conversation. Have an absolutely fantastic day, and see you next time. Bye-bye. This video was brought to you in cooperation with Brilliant.org. Now, Brilliant.org is a website that will help you improve and perfect your math skills. Uh, they will do so with fun kind of down-to-earth examples, things there where you can actually see the purpose of knowing math and understanding physics. So check out the link below. Enjoy.